<laughs> now, do you have a beauty line as well? Yes. I, I have a, so. um, well, I call it like my, a wellness company because it's skincare mm-hmm. and, um, yeah, skincare and also just wellness products. Yeah. Yeah. I share all my tips and tricks and tools with everyone. So, yeah. What don't you do? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> See, okay. So the thing is, like, I'm a creator. So it's like for me to just sit around and, like, not do anything, like, I just can't do it. Yeah. Like, I can't. That's just never been me. So. Idle hands are the devil's workshop. Man, you could say that again. <laughs> you could say that again. Oh, so y'all live in Summit. Mm-hmm. Or is, is it in Summit, or is it just right outside of Macomb? Or? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yes. you've got a blueberry farm down yes, there. Yes, blueberry farm. So tell me, because uh, we're going to do it for the for the camera here, tell me what brought you guys to Mississippi. Mississippi. Okay, so back actually back in 2017, my parents, well, my parents have always had a second home here. Mm-hmm. As a child, I actually spent my summers in Mississippi, um, in Woodville, Mississippi, uh, in a small town with my uh, great grandmother, um, but for us, uh, my parents, they were like, "Hey, you guys should get some property up here." And we're like, <clears throat> "Okay, <laughs> <laughs> this is you know where we were touring. We're spending eighty to ninety percent of our time like on the road." So we looked at it like, "Okay, we'll get this property, but we'll probably just go there, you know, a few times out of the year just to kind of like." You know, balance, ground ourselves, recharge, and then you know, go back. Get into away. The, exactly. Like it was like a supposed supposed to be like a retreat for us. Yeah. Um. But at the end of 2019, I had this vision and download to just move to the farm. So in early 2020, we moved to the farm. Like in the middle of our move, COVID hit, and it was just kind of like, uh, you know, it was kind of like. I, I'm not going to say a blessing in disguise, but people were kind of, people actually thought I knew something, that I knew COVID was coming because. Good timing, right? Exactly. They were like, did you know that COVID was coming? Like, who told you about COVID? I'm like, I honestly, I had no clue. I just knew that I needed to move from California to the farm. And that's what we did. I don't blame you for moving from California. Oh, I don't either. Right. Like Mississippi is forever home. Like I will uh, forever home good yeah and you're doing a lot you want to do a lot here in the state and yes. and move it forward and you know that's what i want to do too right yes. so i'm glad we're having this sit down today and yes and talk to the people about you know kind of what you guys want to do to move it forward and, yeah and me too and what we can do together and bring this place you know where it needs to be man seriously so like just being here in mississippi since i've been here and actually living here um and been around the people in the towns it's like i I'm a visionary, so I can walk into a place or like, and I can see, I I just have visions of what it could be or what it has been. And I saw that one, like there was one point in time where this place was full of life. Yeah. Like it was full of life. I know we discussed it. We talked about this before and, and you mentioned that um, it's America's, it's the birthplace of America's music, mm-hmm. you know? And it's like, for me, when I came here, I'm like, oh my gosh, like we could do so much here. It's like a literally like a blank slate. Yeah. Um, I also noticed that like, there needs to be more like programs and things for kids. Yeah, you know, that time. is one thing that I feel like Mississippi is severely like, we, we need that. You know, the kids don't have anything to do. You yeah. know, they're bored. And so they're getting into all types of things when they really, they just need something to do. That's they're just right. bored. That's right. You know? Um, and in addition to that, just, I mean, just really just building this place back up is such a beautiful place. It is. Such a beautiful place. Isn't you it know? so green here? It is. And that's what I love. Don't you I mean, love that? I love it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Like I said, this is my forever home. Like we're building our forever home here in Mississippi. And we're glad y'all chose here. We're glad to have you here in the hospitality state for sure. Thank you. So tell me this. I know a lot of it's a blank slate. And if you go through District 2 where I'm running for, mm-hmm. it is... You know, I said the other day on the news, some of it is ruins of mm-hmm. what's left of those places. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, Delta Airlines is named after the Mississippi Delta, right? Hey. I mean, <laughs> uh, that used to be a, just a powerhouse of the state. Any decision that was, you know, had any kind of caliber of, 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 of making a move or change in this state came from up there, mm-hmm. you know? And and Jackson here, where we're at today, is, yeah. is in the district. And I'm sure you, you rode through the roads coming through here. <laughs> They're a little tough, you know. <laughs> you saw, and I'm not saying this to say, but you saw what vehicle I was in. Today. Yeah, yeah, I, I would have been, I'd have been just easy along, you yes, know. Yes, because the roads are horrible, and it's like, yeah. 
where the hell, like, can we get the roads fixed at least? I yeah. mean, we're in like the capital city and you're gonna have, and you're like dodging potholes. Like, Drake, I was in, <laughs> I was in a town the other day in the middle of the Delta. I'm on tire five so far campaigning. Oh my and God. And I've been to all 30 counties in the district, which is a lot of real yeah. estate to cover. But, yeah. you know, I was in like Cleveland, Mississippi. If you go to the middle of their downtown, there's, there's a pipe laying. Yeah. Just in the middle of downtown, it's supposed to be four lanes. They've got half a lane on each side, you know, just <laughs> hugging the curb over there. But, I mean, right. dig a hole, put the piping in. Right. You know, and in, I don't know if you've been to Rolling Fork. You know, they got hit by the tornado last mm-hmm. year. It's almost been a year anniversary. And I went through there the other day, and, I mean, they've cleaned up some, but it, it, you could have told me it would come through yesterday, and I'd have and believed you. would you. have believed it, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, the water tower's laying on the ground in the middle of town. Wow. Yeah, I, I haven't been up there to visit, but that is, that's really sad. And I feel like there's no reason for that to be that way. There's not. It's a lot yeah. of corruption and that needs to stop. You yeah. know, you've got to have a watchdog, but when you don't have anybody that's going to hold anybody accountable, that money just slips around on it. <laughs> oh, yeah, it grew, it grows legs. <laughs> quickly, quickly. I mean, could win a gold medal in the Olympics, you know. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, but, yeah. And that's a big problem we have here, but I, I think if we get that under control, you'll start seeing a lot of the other things come in line. Yes, no, for sure. Like, for me, it's all about, like, okay, so we notice, we recognize mm-hmm. this. For me, it's all about doing it at this point, yeah. you know. Like, yeah. just getting in there and just doing the work, yeah. you know? Because um, that's sort of, like, how I operate through life. Like, people always ask me, well, how are you able to do this? How are you able to do that? I'm like, well, I literally just, like, put on my blinders, and I go in, and I just get it done. Yeah, It's like I can sit around all day and talk about, you know, like, what the problems are, what the issues are. But if I just actually, like, just took action, like, it all it takes is one person, you know, that's to make it. a change. So. That's it. I'm all about action. If everybody had that <laughs> mindset right, it would just be, it'd be all It would fixed. be amazing, you know. We have, our problem here is we've had, since we don't have anybody really we can look to that's going to be our champion and we know it 100%, you know, a lot of people have just lost that mindset or, or hope or anything like that, right? And the mindset that we've adopted for the most part mm-hmm. is, it is what it is, <laughs> right? Right. You hear that quite a lot. I hate that saying because yeah. it, it's not. It can be different. It can be, most definitely. Yeah. I mean, and like you said, it's just rolling up your sleeves and actually getting in there and, and fixing it. Oh, yes. Oh, you yes. Know? No, I, I wholeheartedly believe that. Like I said, like even in where I'm at in mm-hmm. the city of Macomb, it's so crazy. Like I'm not tooting my own horn, but I feel like I've been the catalyst for a lot of the change that's happening there right now. Yeah. Um, They wrote in the newspaper, this was like sometime last year, and they were like, this is the most uh, growth that the town has experienced in like 20 years. And I'm like, is that because I'm here? And I'm like, (laughs) like, you know, I'm not saying that like it's it's solely because of me, but I am there and I am doing things like, you know, um, and. And the the city is coming together, and it's really it's so amazing to see it. Like I, you know, I travel a lot, mm-hmm. so when I come back and I get to see, oh my gosh, like that's new, that's new. Like oh my gosh, like this is amazing. Like just new businesses popping up like everywhere, and it's such a beautiful sight. And I'm like, we need this like all over Mississippi because again, like it's such a beautiful place. It is such a beautiful place. The people are amazing here. Like I have friends that I have come and visit, and they're planning on. I actually have one friend who's already like got a place here but i have more that are wanting to come and bring their businesses here and um yeah because there's an exodus from some of these blue states right like new york california i mean especially new york recently (laughs) right i mean yes and california too yeah yeah oh they ran out of u-hauls for like two years in a row (laughs) exactly (laughs) because everyone's like moving out you know it's so funny if you go into certain parts of uh los angeles you'll see these ads and stuff for realtors that or down south to mm-hmm. help people, you know, make that move. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, and when you start weaponizing your policies and things like that or not taking care of the place, right? Like you left California and that's <laughs> everybody knows what a mess California is in, yeah. right? But yeah. and you've never been in politics, but good no, for you yeah. for being able to look at the differences, right? And see those and say, "Hey, these policies are better for us." Yes. Right? And Most that makes definitely. a big difference. Yes. I mean, there comes to a point where some things and that is an oh gosh, another thing that I absolutely love about Mississippi and just yeah. like the people and the culture here is that I'm not going to say we live by the old laws and the old way. 
but it's like our morals and values. We still have them. Exactly, that part. And that is what I appreciate most. Well, not what I appreciate most, but that is at the top of my list of yeah. why I love being here. The people definitely make it. Oh, man, come on. We've yes. got some characters running around this <laughs> Do we? I'm like, I just want to do a video, I mean, like a, a television series of just the people <laughs> of Mississippi, like, because it's amazing, you it know? Would, it would be, a, it would be a, a watcher for sure. It would know? be. I mean, very entertaining, but at the end of the day, like, man, it's all love. Yeah. All love. Yeah, and, and most of the people you meet, you've got a few sore heads like every crowd. Oh, but yeah, that's everywhere. I think 99% of our people are about as sweet as five pounds oh, of sugar. Oh, my God. Gosh, they will literally give you the shoes off their feet and the shirt off their back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, we had when we were talking down there at the uh, oh facility. Guy came up and, yeah, how yep. can I help you? Exactly. You know? How's your husband doing? You know, <laughs> he knew Kevin. He knew who you were, you yeah. know. And, I mean, who doesn't know who you guys are, yeah. you know. So, But Macomb, so, you know, I'm originally from about 30 minutes away from Macomb, mm-hmm. you know. And that was, it was either Macomb or Hattiesburg we went to. Those were our cities, right? Yep. And, yep. uh <laughs> It was just so sad to see Macomb kind of decline. Oh, man. Because it, that was, like, the spot, you know, yeah. one point in time. But like I said, like, I feel like we're the life is coming back it to is. the place. It yeah. is. Like, it's such a beautiful thing When to you witness. start seeing construction equipment downtown, that's a good sign. Oh, oh, it's more than good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, I cannot tell you. And I know that, like, my people, they get so sick and tired of me. Because every time I come back, I'm like, oh, my God. Did y'all see the new Starbucks? Did y'all see the new Chick Fil A? Did y'all see this new cigar lounge on Main Street? Like, did you? It, but it really and truly like excites me because yeah. it's like that's what I like to see. Like, I like to see like Macomb living up to its potential. Yeah, you know, that's the thing that Mississippi hasn't done as a whole. Yes, because our potential, like oh you said, is boundless. Gosh. And you travel, you see what's going on elsewhere. Yes, and know? and those are like. Again, like I'm not trying to turn Mississippi into like a an LA or a New York, but yeah. we have the potential to really be like that place for mm-hmm. people to come and visit. And we've got enough room here. Oh my <laughs> god. Hey, do don't get me wanted. started on that. When I was coming along, when I was a little kid down here, I mean there were music festivals everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. And we had a bluegrass festival right down from the house every year, you know, and I was probably about 10 or 11 years old and they stopped doing all that. You started seeing all this stuff kind of die out mm-hmm. and nobody took up the mantle or the reins. Right. You know, and I think we've we've lost our way a little bit. Our tourism industry used to be, oh my goodness, you yeah. talk about bonkers. There was a reason we adopted the moniker, the hospitality state. Exactly. Right. <laughs> and you go up and down that riverfront now. Have you ever been at the riverfront, all the old houses and everything? I have not. I need to do that. It's like beautiful I'm, over there. Mm-hmm. And I wish I could have took you about 20, 30 years ago when, when it, it was, was booming. Uh, yeah. I mean, it was, there was not a day you would go over there mm-hmm. that it, any of the downtowns weren't just flooded and filled with people. Wow. That's amazing. I mean, yeah. we, we really just need to bring all that back. And then, especially with all the farms here, like yeah. having all the, the a blueberry festival, freaking, well, Louisiana strawberries, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm from Louisiana, <laughs> born and raised. That's but, right. you know, Baton Rouge, I'm, aren't you? Uh-huh. Yeah, yes. Yeah. But, um, I mean, there's just the, the possibilities are literally, like, just endless. Yeah. Literally endless. Yeah. So. Well, good. And, we, and you know. I hope we can get some resources behind you guys on making that Please. Know, bigger. Right? <laughs> yes. That's all it takes is somebody just to say, this is where the money needs to go or over here, or, mm-hmm. you know, and fix it instead of, hey, let's, you know, give it to this group that's run off three times with the money before, <laughs> you know, which which we yes. like to do. Are you familiar with Ferris Street here in downtown? <laughs> no, I'm not. So Tell Ferris me. Street is, it's a little short street here, mm-hmm. but it's his, it was historically – I don't want to call it Black Wall Street down here, yeah. but it kind of, it was booming, right? Yeah. And that was the African-American part of, of Jackson. Yeah. And, oh my goodness, you talk about booming back in the yeah. day. Yeah. And it's completely vacant now. Wow. And they have attempted, uh, this is their fourth time, I believe, right now mm-hmm. to redo that street. The last three times, the people that were going to come in and, and fix it yeah. took the money and ran. No. We yeah. don't want to run off with the money, guys. <laughs> and that's, yeah. I mean, look at the, the TAM scandal, you know? Yeah. And so, I mean... We've got a history of that through here, so we got to fix some of that for yeah. sure. But <laughs> I most definitely like, I, like I said, like it all, it literally, I, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, it only, it just takes one person, yeah, to get in and like make a make a change and actually just put intention and effort into 
you know, moving Mississippi forward. Yeah, and doing what's right for the people. Exactly, yeah. that part. So. so me and you have talked about health care a good mm-hmm. bit. And talk to me about how you feel on, you know, people that are addicts versus criminals, mm-hmm. right, and, and things like that. And I'll let you kind of take off Yeah, I mean, there are far more people that are, that actually need help yeah. and that can be better humans, better human beings, um, as opposed to them being criminals. Yeah. You know, the locking them up in jail, if that jail isn't offering some sort of like rehabilitation program, then they don't need to be there. They need to be in a wellness center. Yeah. You know, like that is what, that's something that I would like to do in the state of Mississippi, provide re- like true rehabilitation centers where we're taking in these people and we're actually providing them with the resources and the help that they need Mm -hmm. so that they can go back out into the world and actually, you know. Be productive members of society. Exactly, that part, yes. Um, I feel at this point it's all about, when it comes to the adults, rehabilitation when it's the kids the the little ones that are coming up mm-hmm. actually being preventative in all in everything intervention you, exactly yeah prevention and intervention that's right you know um providing programs for them to keep them occupied and busy and motivated to be more than what they've seen the past 20 30 years you yeah. know well that goes back to having something to do exactly right so yeah yeah um but yeah that that's kind of like my take on healthcare and even when it comes down to uh, just like providing programs for all people of all ages, mm-hmm. you know, I feel like so with me and when it comes to like hospitals and doctors and things like that, like for me, that is like I'm going there when there is like an emergency situ- situation. I'm dying. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's not where I'm going for regular maintenance or preventative maintenance or of myself like that i'm not going to doctor or the hospital for that so i also feel like we do need to provide um some sort of programs to teach them about you know living a healthier lifestyle and you know just taking care of themselves us being so rural you know it presents a lot of healthcare challenges like we've got hospitals right now all across there you know on the verge of closing yes i learned about that and that's not good no it's not especially yeah so i'm a birth doula as well and um yes yeah, so those are some facts that yeah. i ran across when i was just kind of you know like doing my research and getting a feel for you know mississippi and birthing rates and um all that stuff so yeah it's sad when you look at us compared to the rest of the country it is most definitely most definitely yeah especially because i mean right up the road from where we're at i mean we're at downtown jackson at the gop headquarters I mean, not even a half a mile to a mile up the road is where the first heart transplant was done. Wow. Do you know I did not know that? And that is absolutely amazing. We, like, what the? Back, yeah. in the, back in the 60s, I'd say probably the 80s, we had more medical advances in this state than just about anywhere. Wow. I mean, we, we had some wonderful first. I think we, we've got the first uh, big heart transplant, you know, where they took a pig's mm-hmm. heart and moved it over. Matter of fact, the very first guy that got a pig heart I met him. Wow. He's a client of mine wow. uh, for insurance. And wow. he, he's up there now. I think he's on heart number three. He's outlived every one of his heart doctors. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. He's he's rolling, you know. That but, is pretty amazing. Yeah, and you know, to be able to meet people like that and hear their mm-hmm. stories of what we used to be able to do, you know, I mean UMMC, they're a, a well known facility for a reason, right? Mm-hmm. They did all of that stuff. So I think we've lost our way on some of that stuff and The other thing is, too, right, I think you'll agree with me on this, it's not profitable to have a cured patient. (laughs) Exactly. So Right? It's more, I don't want to say they make you sicker, right, but it's, if we can just treat you Mm -hmm. and not get you better or maybe even make you a little worse on something else, then we've got a customer. Exactly. A customer for life. For life. (laughs) Yeah. And that's. Yeah. Yes, and th- and that's why I said I'm more so about preventative um, health. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm like, ugh, even using the word preventative, but really just like maintaining and taking care of yourself. Like that's so important. Mm-hmm. Like the what you're putting into your body. Can I tell you something? Yeah. I'm actually much healthier here when I'm at home mm-hmm. than when I'm traveling and on the road. Because you're just having to grab stuff on the road. Exactly. Right? But when I'm at home, I'm eating. And that's another thing. Like here in Mississippi, like mm-hmm. we have fresh food. 
readily available to everywhere. us. Everywhere. Everywhere. Like if you're not gardening or farming, your neighbor or your neighbor knows someone that's growing some sort of fruits and vegetables that's or right. something like that is not, I don't feel, now I don't really know the real data, mm-hmm. but I don't feel as though we're at any type of like shortage for we're not. We're not. <laughs> Especially Miss- not here in Mississippi. No, like. no, no. Everybody yeah. just about coming along when I was anyway had a garden, right? We, That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like if if you're not growing, someone else is. So yeah. it's like I feel like we used to farm for the community. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. My grandparents owned a little general store at the four way, you know, so we had to Oh, I love it. Okay, yeah. so you know, farmers markets are another one of my future projects as well. Really yes. good. That's we need more of those yeah. and community-based gardens. Yes. You know, I mean, that's so Food easy to do. Food pantries. Yeah. yeah. I need money for that. That's right. That's <laughs> right. You know, but how easy would it be? You know, somewhere like Leland, Mississippi. It's a little small town. Mm-hmm. You know, but they've got plenty of people that need clean, affordable. You know, fresh food. Yeah. How hard would it be to take some of, some of this vacant land, especially if it's on the tax rolls, right, for yeah. for sale? Take it, make it into little pocket parks. Oh, my god! Put gardens in there, you know, and then the community can take care of I it. I was just going to say they can maintain it. And yeah. that's actually like gardening and all that. That is so therapeutic. And yeah. there are people that apps. If you don't want to do it, there's someone near you that's going to love and like thoroughly love and enjoy doing that. Oh, you don't think those little old ladies wouldn't love getting that's out there? That's what I'm saying. They would love that. Eat it up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and yes. and it would be such a benefit. It would give them a purpose, something mm-hmm. to do. And those are community builders. Yes. You know, when you Most go in, definitely are. Uh, I've got a buddy that goes in, and he is actually a community builder. So mm-hmm. he'll go into a neighborhood, and you know, they're just all random people. You know, and he'll go in and have little projects. Almost everyone he does, he's got a garden. Yes. It brings people together. It really does. Yeah. Oh, man. Let's go get dirty and plant some. Like, seriously, I I brought so many, I pulled so many people into my garden. That's where, like, we literally, like, (laughs) commune. We've cried. We laugh. We scream. Like, it is really and truly, like, a community building. You go cry amongst the blueberries. Oh, yes. (laughs) Man, I I talk to the blueberries about all my problems. That's right. (laughs) Oh, goodness. Well, tell me this. Uh... Crime, now, that's a big thing that we mm-hmm. hadn't talked about either. Yeah. And we've kind of hinted on some things, you know, about if you give people something to do. Something else to do. Yeah, yes. something to look forward to in life, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of that is preventative. Exactly. Right. Yes. Um. So even, like, with the crime, I feel, I know that everything is that isn't as, as simple as I'm saying it, but in my brain, it's as simple <laughs> as providing alternatives, providing yeah. things for these kids. Because mostly it's mainly our young kids that are getting into crime. Yeah. And it's because they have nothing else to do. You know, where are the programs for them? Like, yeah. the where, like for me, I would love to bring, um, like, athletic programs, um, arts, music and arts. Mm-hmm. Um, and even like you mentioned the Votex, like I remember that being a thing when I was a kid, oh, yeah. like that's where they would go for like welding and the women would go and, um, do all sorts of like, um, I remember my grandmother would go and teach, uh, sewing and mm-hmm. just all sorts of like, just, you know, like, uh, different trades. Yeah. Skills. Skills. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I feel like that is something that is definitely missing and would it would make a, a huge difference. A big one. A huge difference. We've pushed everybody down this four year degree path to debt. That oh oh gosh, don't get me started on school. <laughs> I'm a college dropout, okay? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because I, I, I and I'm a co- I left school because I felt that there was like a better way. Like that wasn't the path for me. And yeah. that's not the path for everyone. I honestly feel as though if you're not going to school to be like a doctor, don't, I'm not saying don't go to college, but you know what I'm saying? Really, <laughs> really, really look into yeah. other alternatives and options. There's a know? lot cheaper options out there. Yes. And they're better suited. That part. Yeah. And you can actually 
get a job with the certifications or degree yeah. that you um, acquire from it. So we were all told, right, just go to college, get your degree, and you'll have a job waiting on you when that you is, get out. That's not true. Uh, at all. I know so many people that have four-year college degrees that don't even work in the same field because they weren't even able to get a job. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I mean, I went to, and I'm not tooting my own horn, kind of like you are, yeah. but <laughs> I went to the math and science school, mm-hmm. went to MSU, graduated top of my class a year early, top of that class too, you know. Wow. And mm-hmm. I got out. <laughs> and Where were the shops? Yeah, you know, and it wasn't like I didn't apply or anything. Right. I, I applied from Portland, Maine to Portland, Oregon. Wow. I mean, it was probably 2,500 jobs or so and yeah, nothing. That is a very, very tough, tough path to go down. If, Like I said, mm-hmm. if you're not going to become a, a doctor or yeah. something that actually requires all of that schooling, Look into yeah. something else. No need to pay for that receipt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. That was. Uh, but yeah. that was a tough one when I got out. You know, I went back home uh, to Foxworth, and my grandfather got drafted in Vietnam. Mm-hmm. You know, when he was really young, and he always wanted to be a farmer. Bless his heart. Oh. You know, and and bless my heart too, because I got into. <laughs> Uh, I went back, and I've always enjoyed growing pumpkins. Mm-hmm. I really like nice. pumpkins and gourds, uh-huh. and uh-huh. I became a pumpkin farmer uh-huh. for about seven or eight months. Wow. And it would have went well, but it rained every day that summer but 13 days. <laughs> wow. And it flooded those little pumpkins out. Oh, my god! And I wasn't big enough to have crop insurance. Exactly. You know? And I said, you know, I grew up farming, and I've, I've been through some bad years before. This really kicked an old boy while he was down. <laughs> You know, and so I had 300 pumpkins I picked, and I had I had like 40 or 50 acres of pumpkins planted. Wow. And they just withered, withered, and died, oh, you know. Oh, my So I, I gathered my little pumpkins, and I went and sold what I could and sold out of them. Yeah, we had a lot of pumpkin pie that Thanksgiving. Yeah. And uh, sold out what I could, and then I got looking around. I said, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I got to do I something. I don't know if I'm going to do this again. I had the crops ordered for the next year, you know, and I, I sat and I said, you know. <laughs> to rethink it <laughs> i went to papa i said papa i said you know i know you know we did this and it was fun did you get your kicks he said, oh yeah 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 he would just ride around on the little mule little kawasaki mule he'd pull up and you know how we doing you know and right. pull off that was he was a farmer that year <laughs> you know and i said shoot this ain't no this ain't cutting out for no boy here and right. so i found a job up here selling cars and, and been here in jackson area ever since but god bless our farmers for what they do oh man that's tough because huh. you're, you're working with Mother Nature. Whatever she says goes. That's right. You know? That's right. Well, and so the big problem that we've got, because District 2 is like, you go over Yazoo City, it's farmland is far. Drinking this, the flattest place I've ever seen on planet Earth. Oh, my gosh. It that is, is amazing. Uh, and if I had a gun and shot somebody from Greenwood, it'd probably hit them in Greenville. Wow. You know, it's just flat wow. as can be. And all of it's farmland. And mm-hmm. we used to have a ton of farmers through there. Mm -hmm. It's consolidated more now, Mm -hmm. which, you know, that is what it is. But part of that is because the equipment that you have to purchase, you know, is is very expensive nowadays. (laughs) Trust me, I know. (laughs) Right, I know you would, right? So were you able to get your equipment here in the U.S. or do you have to go abroad and bring it in? No, I got it in the U.S. and it was very costly. It was very costly. I mean, you've got to be running, like if you're planting row crops, you've got to be planting thousands of acres to be able Just to, to be break able to make, it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean when you pay a million dollars for a combine or more. Uh yeah. Yeah. Cuz you've got to you've had to buy the shakers, right? Actually, I have not and I've been because it's very expensive. They are. So, we literally have been doing it by hand. Which so, is horrible. that is awful. I how know. many acres do you have? <laughs> okay, so the thing is I don't have that many acres of okay. blueberries. Okay. I only have about I say about 7 acres of blueberries. So, it's not I know. It's a lot, but it's not. You know what I'm saying? And oh. honestly, a lot of them have gone to waste, sadly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but I... Can I get some money for some equipment? Dr- I kidding. would not be out there shaking seven acres of blueberries. Girl, I'd be... I know. Oh my Look, God. my neighbor has a, one of those machines. I've oh, been yeah. I've been asking, thinking about uh, asking to uh, lease it or something. But so you know firsthand, so... That equipment, and we've lost, I'd say over the last 20 years, we've lost probably 70 to 80 percent of our our dealers we had, you know. And John Deere did a really good part on keeping their dealers, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's why they are where they are today. Yes. uh, And I'm 
partial. I don't want to say don't let them run like a deer, but I'm a little partial to the hey. red myself at International on <laughs> that case, you know. But uh, we have five in our district, in District 2, we have five universities. You know, and one of them is Delta State, right? And they're a, a mirror image of Mississippi State in the Delta, you know, mm-hmm. ag school, both of them. Why is it that we have all this downtown space? We have five universities. We have this problem, but we have no maker space. We have no entrepreneurship space. We have no entrepreneurship programs in place. Oh, and we don't even intervene in high school. We don't even have these in college, right? We have them just not at all. Yeah. That's a big missed opportunity, if you ask me. It's a huge missed opportunity because yeah. there are so many, so many like just talented kids, and not everyone is meant to go off and work for someone else. Yeah. Like that, I'm one of those kids. That's right. You know, um, don't like punching that time clock. Oh no, <laughs> no, 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 no! I'd be a great employee. Yeah, I, I'd help you to build an, an amazing business. But there are people that are capable of being entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. You know, and yeah. I do feel we most definitely need to do um and and that's something that i wanted to implement as well like yeah. because yes and that mixed in with the votech could just create oh my gosh amazing a pipeline and of success it would and and hopefully like those kids would grow up and stay here and we just keep it going and that's going the thing going. right if you look at the data on jobs that start somewhere mm-hmm. they usually stay there and that's the whole point yes that's right. <laughs> if it's here they're not they're more than likely going to stay here that's they're right. not gonna leave and go and do it somewhere else. and we've had entrepreneurs from this state uh, all plenty mm-hmm. you know that have made mega money i mean you look back PV Electronics, I'm sure you're familiar with mm-hmm. them. They're out of Meridian, mm-hmm. you know, and Mr. PV still lives here, you yep. know. So <laughs> you've got things like that that we used to do, you yes. know, and have movers and shakers, and we can again. Yes, we most definitely can. There's so much talent here. Yeah. Like, so much. So tell me this. We've talked about some of the issues that we face here. Mm-hmm. How do we... Because our biggest problem is if we're divided, we're never going to stand united, right? How do we bring everybody together? How do we work towards these goals and make them real? For me, like, I feel like I, I'm i doing that right now. Um, I mean, it's really just all about bringing, I'm not going to say bringing people together, but, like, music. Yeah. That is a huge thing that uh, – music and food. <laughs> Get to anybody, right? No, seriously, yeah. music and food, you know, building community, communing together. Um, I feel like that's one of the the easiest ways to actually bring people together. Um, I mean, like, if you if you come to, like, any function of mine or, like, my husband, you're mm-hmm. going to see people of all different walks of life, all different shades of colors, uh, ethnicities, like, all of that. Yeah. Um, and I'm... I, I don't want to sound ignorant, but I, I feel like that's very easy and simple to do. <laughs> you it know? is when you're focused on moving forward instead of staying in the past. That part, you yeah. know, like, and I'm not stuck in the past. Like, yeah. I'm always looking ahead, yeah. you know. I, I am present, but I'm always looking forward. Like, yeah. I don't care about what happened, you know. Like, it's all about what I do today. What I do today is what changes the past and the future. That's right. That's how we move forward. Yes. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Morgan Freeman says if you want to end racism, quit talking about it. That part. We could keep talking about this or we could do something about it. Yeah. I'm the doer. Yeah. I'm going to do something about it. Yeah. You know? And for me, like, I don't even, when I walk into a room, I'm not going to say I don't see color. I literally don't. Everyone's, you're just a person to me. Yeah. You know? We're all Americans. That part. Yeah. You know? Um, and I don't let that hinder me, you know? Yeah. And I think that is attributable to y'all's success. Exactly. <laughs> right. Big time. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, tell me this. Moving Mississippi forward, anything that we haven't covered in this segment, what is the one thing that you want to see to move this state forward? Oh, gosh. Like the funding for the programs. Funding for the programs. Like that is such – that that's important. That's a real key to building up the community, building these people up, and keeping our people here. Yeah. You know, so that they will eventually, like, if we give to them now, like, they're going to give back to the community. It's like with working the land. We work the land. We love on the land. The land gives back to us. You reap what you sow. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Drake, good. (laughs) Hey, thank you for sitting down and talking Mm -hmm. with me on this. 
No and problem. You know Thank I look you. forward to working with you on moving this Likewise, place Likewise, yes. Good. <laughs> hey, if you've got any questions, you can go follow Drake. I'll link her stuff below. And, of course, you can always go to my website, follow my stuff, and let's build a better tomorrow together.